How's it going, everybody? So this video is a little bit different than my normal settings video, um, and that's because the X90K, I had that a while ago, and uh, never got around to doing the settings video for it. Um, the issue is a lot of that footage, uh, there's a lot of moray um, in it, so I didn't have time to check the footage after recording, uh, and I would have had to reshoot it all, and I don't have the TV anymore. So what I'm going to do is just show some uh, pictures of how certain settings work, um, kind of go through some details about it, and then just go over the settings like this. So starting off, um, one of the issues with the X90K uh, is there can be noticeable blooming, especially in dark scenes. Um, so I'm going to do two picture modes. Custom will be set up accurately with, you know, the, the blooming will be visible. Um, but then I'm also going to do cinema mode uh, with some recommended settings to help mitigate the blooming, even though it will take away some detail, cause a little bit of crushing, and it won't be as accurate. Um, but because of the amount of blooming, like it can really uh, just help alleviate that distraction if you really don't like blooming. Um, so one of those settings uh, is the black adjust setting. So with this image here, you can just see if I change back and forth between off and low, um, there's really not a whole lot of visible uh, change here, but it does help a bit with the, you know, the blooming that you can see. Um, so that is one of the tools that we'll be using for the cinema mode. And then if I go a little bit more here, uh, so this is now an HDR. So an HDR with the black adjust on low and then off. You can again see it's not really causing too much harm to the image. Um, but it does kind of help a little bit in certain scenes with how much blooming you see. So at least on low, there's not a, a lot to worry about using it. But now, uh, this right now is with the local dimming on high, and we're going to cover local dimming after we get through the uh, black adjust and some other stuff. But um, with local dimming now on medium, so this is with the black adjust now on off, and then as I go from off to low to medium to high, like if you look at the wall in the upper part of the image, um, you can see where, especially around medium and high, the wall star does start to get darker. So we don't really want to push the black adjust into medium or high. You want to keep it at low. Um, however, if you really want to help with you know the blacks and getting rid of some of that blooming um, you know, and you like medium or high, that's fine too. Uh, it just depends on the scene you're looking at and um, how you like it. So with the uh, Sony TVs, you know, they have the Bravia Core app. And when you are using Bravia Core, I've been asked before about using the calibrated mode. Um, and how is it calibrated? Well, it's definitely not calibrated at all. You can see how much more blue there is. Um, and it just, it really pulls out all this uh, low bit rate. Um, problems here. I do not recommend using this Bravia Core calibrated mode at all. It, it really does look bad. Um, and then here is an HDR. Again, you just see everything turns blue. You see more of the problems with the quality of the content. And it just really kind of blows everything out and over brightens uh, dark areas. So um, yeah, don't use the Bravia Core calibrated mode. All right, so now for the local dimming setting, obviously low is going to have the most amount of visible blooming, um, and it's also not really just it's a, there's really no reason to use low. Uh, medium is the most accurate setting that also has the highest peak highlights, uh, but there is some notable blooming, especially if you're a subtitle user. Um, that's really where I would recommend just sacrificing a little bit of detail, a little bit of accuracy to use high, uh, because high does help with the blooming, and the subtitle blooming is really noticeable on this TV. So if I click here, going back and forth between medium and high, um, you can see how it does darken uh, some of the areas with high. Um, and then with medium, there's more visible detail but again, there is going to be more visible blooming as well. So this is going to come down to your preference of do you want more blooming with a little bit more brightness and more detail than you would use medium. But if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of that 
uh, high end brightness and we're not talking a lot. It's only like 50 nit difference. Um, but if you are willing to sacrifice some of that uh, and sacrifice some of the shadow detail to have much lower blooming or much less noticeable blooming, um, then you would set this to high. Moving on from here. So now we're back into the HDR scene I picked out. This is local dimming on high versus medium. And again, like if you just look around in the darkest shadowy areas, you really see the difference. Um, if you look around like right here, you can see a pretty big change between high and medium. Uh, and then, you know, looking at the wall up here again, you can see where it changes. And then like right here, high is a bit darker. And then we go to medium and you see because of this bright light right here, it is causing this to bloom more. So that's a perfect example where even if it's not completely dark area, you'll have visible blooming when the local dimming's on medium if there's a bright object right there. But by using high, you see how much darker and better contrast that looks right there. So again, medium is technically the more accurate setting uh, for detail, but I think high most people are going to prefer because of that extra contrast separation and just less visible blooming. Okay, so now this is just going to real quick show where I have cinema set up um, with using some of the features to mitigate as much of the blooming as possible. And then custom is set up accurately. So especially if you look up here, you can see how bright all of this is and all this blooming up here. Uh, however, if you look over here, you'll see a lot more detail when it's on custom. And then when I switch back to cinema, you see how this is much darker and there is some crushing and lost detail. However, up here, the, you know, the, the blooming is much less, but of course these are lights. So there is going to be lights, um, you know, natural blooming around these lights. Um, so you do see that, but if in this area right here where it's nice and dark, if we go back to custom, you see where this is, the blooming is too much and it's blowing out like out down into here. And then over here on the side, this is just really over brightening because of it. Um, so again, come back to cinema and it does help get rid of that. And it's not necessarily cinema versus custom. It's just the way I set these up, these, these modes. Uh, if you were to unlock the other custom for pro one, custom for pro two modes, then you can have, you know, more uh, presets available to try out different settings. So um, before we get to all of the settings and I go through all those, setting up on the Xbox, the way you would do it is turn the local dimming off and you would also turn the tone mapping to off. And then you can follow the directions for both the Xbox and the PlayStation 5. And then you see up here where that's going to be 1000 nits on the white pages and the dark or black page, we're always going to set that to zero. Uh, so on the PlayStation, on the black page, again, you just go all the way down so you can't go any darker and there's no knit readout. So what you would do for the white ones is go all the way down and then count 15 clicks up is going to get you close to a thousand nits. All right. So now what we're going to do is just have this laid out for the settings. Again, the footage that I shot doesn't look very good. Um, so I figured this will be easier let me uh, zoom in a little bit here. So custom, again, is going to be set up accurately. In the ambient optimization menu, um, if you turn off the light sensor, all of this is just going to go off. So that's what I recommend for everything. Then for brightness, um, this is the, the actual brightness slider um, is going to be adjusting how bright the image is, but also with LCD based panels, the brighter you set it, the uh, less dark your black level is going to be. So in SDR, you want to set this as low as you can with the image still being bright enough to comfortably view in your own lighting condition. Uh, let me see if I can zoom this in some more. Okay. So I would start at 15. And then if, you're in a, if you are in a very bright room, you can turn it up as needed. I would try to not go over 35. 
and the higher you set this, the more gray your blacks are going to look. Contrast stays at default 90. Gamma, uh, negative 1 would be 2.3. Uh, 0 would be 2.2. And negative 2 would be 2.4 in the custom mode. Uh, I think most homes, uh, you should set it to negative 1, and you'll be fine there. Um, then, instead of doing these separately for SDR and HDR, what happens is when you go to HDR content, it will automatically max out the brightness slider. Um, your tone mapping, you would want to have as gradation preferred in HDR. And then your peak luminance in HDR will automatically switch too high as well. So you don't have to touch anything or worry about any of that. Um, black level, we're going to keep at 50. Black adjust in this custom mode, which again, we're going for accuracy, we're going to keep that on off. And then advanced contrast enhancer, always leave this off. Um, auto local dimming, leave at medium for the accurate custom mode. Uh, peak luminance, again, we're going to use off for SDR because we don't want to push the brightness too much and then uh, give up our black levels. And then in HDR, it will automatically switch to high. Color, just leave this alone. 50, expert 1, hue at 0, live color off. Clarity, this is where you can adjust this how you like it. Uh, sharpness, definitely leave at 50. That's the neutral setting. You don't need to touch that. Reality creation, random noise, and digital noise. Um, you can turn all of these off. Um, you can set the noise reductions to low or auto. I generally find, for the most part, um, putting these three to auto works very well for most people. Smooth gradation, uh, that's going to clear up some of the color banding you can see in certain content. Um, generally low, good enough, so just leave it at low. Motion, this is all your own personal preference. Um, however, I generally find the smoothness I, you know, off is if you don't like soap opera effect, and then one if you just want a little bit of added smoothing without a lot of uh, soap opera effect. Um, that's generally where most people will put it. And then for sports, some people like to put this to two. Uh, and then even regular content, if you like more soap opera effect, you can put that to two. Clearness is your black frame insertion. Uh, you're going to have this off for nearly everything because it will, one, reduce brightness, and two, uh, cause flicker. The only time that <clears throat> I really think it's worth uh, trying is if like on the Nintendo Switch and you want it to have more of a CRT type look and feel, um, it can help with the motion resolution by using it, uh, but you would have to put it on max and then there's going to be flicker and then it's up to you and your eyes if you adapt to that flicker or not. Cinemotion, I definitely recommend turning this off or on low. Um, the only time it should be on high is if you're having issues with adaptive frame rates and interplay interpolated content um, which really isn't an issue in the in North America so um, low and off definitely the best option if you set it to high chances are you're going to see frame skips um, or stutters and that's the cause everything else that's below the motion flow menu we're just going to leave all of that at default for all of this so now if we go back up and then we want to set up our setting to try to mitigate the blooming as much as possible, but also keeping it relatively accurate as possible as well. Um, again, we're gonna turn off ambient light sensor. Again, with the brightness, we're gonna try and keep it as low as possible. However, we are gonna have a little bit lower gamma, most likely. Uh, so you can push this just a little bit higher than that mode, the custom mode. Leave contrast at 90 again. And then in cinema mode, Gamma tracks slightly differently than custom. Um, so again, the more you go down, the darker the image will be. So negative one is still probably recommended. Uh, but if you really want more um, mitigation of the blooming, try out negative two. Then again, in HDR, we're going to use gradation preferred. Black level still at 50. Now black adjust, like I said earlier, I'd say use low, but if you uh, don't mind what it's doing or you prefer medium or even high, that's up to you. Uh, but low seems to mitigate some of the blooming without really affecting the image. Um, 
So I would start there. Contrast enhancer off, and then local dimming high. That's going to be your biggest tool for trying to get rid of the blooming as much as possible. Uh, again, peak luminance will be off in SDR, and then automatically switch to high for HDR. And then everything below here is what we already talked about. And then for game mode, pretty much going to mirror what we did with cinema, except we're going to make sure that the gamma is either 0 or negative 1, depending on how bright you want it for gaming. Um, setting this lower will keep a little bit more saturation, though. Uh, so I would say probably use negative 1, um, and then adjust your brightness as needed uh, for your taste and your environment. Um, local dimming, definitely, for especially for gaming, where there's a lot of you know HUD elements and whatnot that can be distracting with blooming, I would definitely put that on high. And then again, the peak luminance off for SDR, and then it'll switch to high for HDR automatically. And then again, all of, the, all of this is going to be the same, except that there's less processing features available in game mode. So I just set reality creation to auto, smooth gradation to low, uh, and then everything else off. Again, if you're trying out the Nintendo Switch and you want to try black frame insertion, um, you can do that here. But for the most part, I think most people are going to have this off. Now, as we get into Dolby Vision, uh, Dolby Vision Dark is going to be the more accurate mode. Um, and Dolby Vision Bright will be the, uh, you know, a brighter, more day viewing Dolby Vision mode. Uh, so pretty much you just leave everything at default, except for in Dolby Vision Bright, I would say turn on gradation preferred. And then the local dimming, medium or high, depending on, you know, high, everything we talked about earlier. If you want less blooming um, and a little more crushing of detail or medium, if you don't mind the blooming and you just want to have all the detail. And then everything else is as we talked about. And then with Dolby Vision Dark, you pretty much just leave it alone and adjust the local dimming setting to either medium or high based on your preference here. Uh, and then tone mapping should be off with Dolby Vision Dark. And then this again will be the more accurate of the Dolby Vision modes. Um, so that's pretty much going to cover it for the X90K settings. Uh, sorry this took so long. Um, just had a lot of things come up. Other videos took you know priority. It kind of just got forgotten about. Uh, but I have been getting a lot of comments asking for this. And uh, sorry, it's in this type of way instead of scrolling through on the TV. But again, I don't have the footage really to redo it. Um, and this might be easier for some of you. So let me know if uh, this worked out better in your opinion um, or if I should just keep doing it how I usually do it, you know, just scrolling through on the TV. But um, I did want to use these images earlier just to again show the differences here. And the X90K really is a bit of a special case because the blooming can be just so distracting. So this is a case where you kind of find that line of what you're willing to sacrifice from accuracy in order to get rid of some of that blooming. So I uh, hope this helps you out. Thank you all for watching, and I'll uh, try to catch you in the next one. Thanks.